This video is sponsored by Byte Tools. More about that a little later. If you're a voiceover user on an iPhone or an iPad and you struggle to use the on-screen keyboard, or you would like an easier way to search through your apps, then this is the video for you. Today we are talking about handwriting mode. Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. First things first, this video was recommended by a viewer, so a huge thank you to them for doing that. But today we're gonna to be talking about handwriting mode. If you're unfamiliar with this, or maybe you've seen it in the settings and you were curious what it is, well, handwriting mode has a couple of functions. The two main ones that we're gonna be talking about today are using it in the keyboard when typing, and then using it to search for stuff on your phone. In the simplest terms, it lets you write on the screen instead of typing, but you do it one letter at a time. It's actually pretty awesome and you might want to turn it on and give it a try. So let me show you, it'll all become clear. All right, we need to go into voiceover settings because we've got to enable this in the rotor. It's not turned on by default. Audio, commands, activity, rotor, button. Rotor. Selected, characters. Now in here, we can turn on different features that will show up in the rotor. There's actually a huge list here, so it wouldn't hurt to come in here and see what's available. You might find something that could be useful. Reorder selected, handwriting. But you just wanna come in here and select handwriting. That's going to turn it on as one of the options in the rotor, and then it will be available whenever you need it. One way that I've been using it a ton is when searching for apps on my phone. Now, yes, I could just ask it, ask Siri to open the app, but maybe you're in an area that you can't talk to your phone. It's just not practical to talk to your phone at that time. Or maybe there's an app that Siri just will not open. I have an app on mine called Our Groceries, and no matter how many times I ask Siri to open it, she never will open it. She just, she can't find that app for some reason. So let me show you how easy it is to do with handwriting. First, we need to do the rotor to get to handwriting. If you're not familiar, the rotor, you put down two fingers and rotate them. Handwriting, lowercase. Handwriting, there we go, lowercase. Now, all I need to do is write out the words letter by letter for what I'm looking for. In this case, our groceries. So the first one's gonna be an O. O, three apps, one step reader. It tells me that there's three apps on my phone that start with an O. So I wanna continue to narrow down that search. So I'm gonna do a U. U, two apps, our groceries. That's the one I want. So now I can double tap. Opening our groceries, to our groceries. Launch that List, app. Back button. Super fast Decoy, and easy. Widget, five. Let's go for settings. Headings, actions, handwriting, lowercase. Back on handwriting. Now I'm gonna do the S. S, nine apps, S2 GS. The E. E, two apps, seeing AI. T. T, one app, settings. Settings, double tap. Settings, voiceover, back button. Now how about, uh, I don't know, Gmail. First, we gotta go to handwriting, obviously. Handwriting. There it is. Lowercase. Now I'm gonna do the G. G, six apps, gauge. Now the M. M, one app, Gmail. Gmail, double tap. Not recognized. So Gmail, Matt. There no. we go. Real quickly, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Byte Tools. Byte Tools is a visually impaired business based in Canada that provides transcription service for students. It was founded by Tate Hoyam, who was concerned that blind and visually impaired students often didn't have access to the same resources as their fully sighted classmates. This includes textbooks, diagrams, handouts, especially in upper level STEM classes. So Tate and several others created Byte Tools, which can provide fully accessible transcription services to students at no cost to them. Although the transcribers are fully sighted, all the bookkeeping, quality assurance, and software development is done by those who are also visually impaired. All completed work is a web page which can be viewed online or downloaded for offline work. This means your transcriptions are fully accessible anywhere as long as you have access to a browser. Most of the documents are text-based, so no need for physical diagrams. Although the company is based in Canada, they are completely international. So no matter where you are, they'll be able to help. The transcription service is fast, which means the blind student gets their slides and textbooks when they need them, preventing them from falling behind. And remember, there's never a cost to the person who needs this service, the institution you work for or the school you attend covers the bill. 
To learn more about Byte Tools, check out the description down below for a link to the website and the contact information. A huge thank you to Byte Tools for sponsoring this video. All right, next let's check out using it with the keyboard. I know a ton of people that struggle to type with voiceover. It's just not intuitive for them. So this might be a better alternative. It's going to work exactly the same way, except that we are going to write out our words on the screen. So just like before, we have to use the rotor to get to handwriting. Misspelled words, characters, handwriting. There it lowercase. is. Now it said lowercase. There is a way to get uh, capitalized, and that is to use three finger swipe down. Uppercase. There we go. Now I can write hello. Cap H. Now I'm going to go to lowercase. Lowercase. There we go. That was a three finger swipe up to go back to lowercase. E. E. L. 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 O. O. Now I need a space. That's a two finger swipe to the right. Space. Hello. Now let's say, how are you? H. O. W. Space. How. A. R. U. Okay, I made a mistake. Now I made it on purpose to show you how to delete. To delete, it's a two finger swipe to the left. Basically, you're going back to get rid of that letter. U. There we go. Now I can put the E. E. And a space. Space. R. Uh, y. O. Not recognized. Now, it just said not recognized when I tried to do the U. And that's because I did a bit of a sloppy U. Uh, it's pretty good at recognizing the letters that you do, but sometimes that happens. U. There's the U. Now, I need to put in a question mark. How do I do punctuation? Well, we go back to our three finger swipe. Three finger swipe down. Uppercase. There's uppercase. Numbers. Numbers. Punctuation. Punctuation. So now I can do a question mark. Comma. U. Question mark. I put in the question mark and it recognized it as a comma. But instead of trying to do it again, I just did a two finger swipe up. And then that will toggle through different characters that are similar to what you just did. That comes in much more handy when you're trying to put in different characters of the same letter. For example, if you are writing a, a word in a different language and maybe there was an accent symbol above one of the vowels, you could write that vowel and then do a two finger swipe up or down to cycle through the different options for that same letter and find the one that has the little accent symbol. Now, the only thing with handwriting that you need to keep in mind is that it kind of takes over a lot of the different gestures that we use pretty often. For example, if I wanted to go back to my home screen and I try to swipe up from the bottom like normal, it's going to recognize that as a vertical line or an L maybe. So you have to remember you've got to get out of handwriting in order for some of these other gestures to work again. Two different ways you can do that. Obviously you can go into the rotor and rotor off of handwriting, but probably the easiest way is to do a two finger scrub or a Z form. Stopping handwriting. And then now all of our, now all of our gestures work again. The other problem with handwriting that I ran into very quickly is it doesn't work or some, a lot of the gestures don't work if you have the zoom magnifier enabled because the magnifier takes over some of the handwriting gestures like the finger, three finger swipe down and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Check it out, handwriting mode on voiceover on your iPhone or your iPad. Once you get used to it, it could speed up your productivity and make things a little easier. All right, if you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comments down below. I will put a link to an article about handwriting mode with voiceover. It, will, it talks about all the different gestures and how to do everything. You should find that pretty interesting as well. But that's it, guys. As always, this is Sam with The Blind Life. I'll see you next time.